Welcome, everybody. As you can see by the uh, backdrop, I'm back at Stunhanger East. And uh, I stopped and had a uh, conversation with a friend of mine that I flew with 30 years ago. <laughs> and I saw him about 10 years ago in passing, maybe it's 15 years ago. He was taking pictures. Well, I got to tell you, his name is Danny. And he is a super craftsman. He makes the finest bell cranks on the market. And the good news is he's going to teach me how to make them. But let me show you what they are. Yeah, let's see what they weigh first. These bell cranks are unobtainium. Mm, mode. Seven grams. This bell crank has been bushed. It's mechanically bonded. It has a it has a bearing, you know, on the top. They come out of the mold, they look like this. The flashing, of course, gets taken off. I'm going to give this one to John. This is one that we worked on. And, uh, yeah, we're going to get to see how to make these. Uh, we've decided that we're going to do a Saturday at John's on the 16th of January and that'll start at nine o'clock. Danny's going to bring all his uh, molding equipment with him. We're going to, he lays up propellers. We're going to make some propellers. We're going to make some bell cranks and talking about spinners, just about anything that you want. This, this guy is sharp, but he, he made me a great steak dinner. Thank you, Dan, for the steak dinner. I really had an enjoyable meeting with him. Well, I'm doing what I'm going to be doing until finished. And that's rubbing. But since I'm back here, I have a, uh, I have a tool that I don't have to do it all by hand. If I can find it. I had just had it in my hand. There it is. I've already sanded this out. I've already sanded it out the first time. It'll take a couple of sandings. No, I'm I'm gonna make them. <laughs> he don't want to get involved in doing it again. He's just gonna show me how to do it, and they are spectacular. They're pr probably going to take take this one here and make a mold out of it. They are spectacular. The only thing I asked them to do was move the pivot hole, but that ain't no big deal. We can, we can handle that. Anyway, Snap on. This is a, a ridiculously expensive piece of gear. So I don't expect everybody to have one of these. But we're gonna we're gonna bring it up and see what it looks like. See how long it takes to do a wing. Let's see, I wanna do do the white compound with that one and the dark compound with the other one. I have some more pads, but I'm sure you guys are probably sick of this airplane. But now that I'm this close, I'm going to push to get it finished. So I can move on to other things. And we'll be starting on the hour a day project. Come Monday or Tuesday.
we'll go back to the other to the other project. Let's see if we can get it to come up. If not, I'll have to sand it again. Start out slow till you get the compound. Well, you don't want to. You don't want to go real fast anyway because you'll be slinging this compound all over the place. The uh, ideal speed for buffing is 1,500 RPM, and we'll turn it up to that here as soon as they get the compound spread. And this will take several, several attempts. Ooh. Getting ready to flip it off the stand. You got to be so careful when you're machine polishing these airplanes that you can rip the airplane. Wow. Blew, every, blew that shit everywhere. I got to wipe that off. <laughs> yeah. Probably not a good thing to show you. I mean, it threw it everywhere. Yeah, man. I shouldn't have pulled the trigger like that. It's all over the place. There. Got all over my other tucker. White specks everywhere. Oh, well, we can live with that, I guess. I'll have to work on getting that off here in a minute after the video. Like I say, <laughs> be easy on it to start out. Hopefully we can get this to come up without sanding it again. I doubt it, though. This will save a ton of work. Probably knock about know, five, five, six hours off the job. Stay off the edges. Trying to bring the heat up in the paint. I can't tell you how good it was to see Dan again. We don't look the same, that's for sure. Sorry, Dan, but you came out the door and I go, who is this old man? <laughs> yeah, shit. He was a young guy when I, when I knew him. And I got more crap flung on this airplane. 
I'm gonna have to move this thing. It's red and them white specks really show up. You can hear it. It, it probably needs to be sanded again. I'm probably kidding myself. Pretty weird though, he had two cats exactly like mine. Exactly. One yellow, one one tabby and one regular gray. It was weird. But Danny is a fine craftsman. I just got to get over there and help him get all that crap out of his garage. So he's got a place to work. It'll be a good time on the 16th, I can tell you that. We also got some uh, blanks for control horns. From Dan. So make some control horns. Now if you look at this flap here, it's shiny, but it has acne. And I gotta get that acne out, so I'm gonna have to sand. The uh, the top side I got pretty good for the first go around, but it took two days to do it. So this will be a ongoing thing for me here. I'm gonna go over to John's tomorrow. We might shoot some footage over John's. He wanted to see this. I know you guys don't wanna see it anymore, but I wanna get her done. You can watch them windy tapes of him rubbing for hours. Watch me, I guess. I should have brought my foam pad back. I just don't have room for all this crap. I didn't have... Oh, no, more sanding. <laughs> yeah, more sanding. If you want shiny, you have to sand. Well, let me reiterate that statement. If you want shiny and light, you have to sand. Because I can make it shiny. Just get me a quart of urethane and dump it on there. Yeah, this side... This side needs to be sanded again. Let's see. Let's see how this side, if it comes up quick. It will take so many hours of this buffing and sanding it. You can't believe it. Oh, I showed Dan. No, I didn't hear it. I don't pay them guys no mind. <laughs> what, what are they debating? Urethane is great. Urethane is light. I got a perfect... Yes, I do. I got a perfect example of how much urethane weighs. 
Paul Taylor has a windy video where he's painting his silver Spitfire. He sprayed the cow, just the cow, with an airbrush with urethane clear. Any guesses to how much it added? And it was acceptable to him. Give me a guess what you think urethane clear on just the cow, Wade. I'll give you a clue. It won't me be won't be me doing it again. Learn from others' mistakes. Any guesses? Certainly there has to be a guess out there. tells you right he he paints it and weighs it right on camera no 15 grams 15 grams that's that's a half an ounce for just a little cowling so then of course he went ahead and painted the fuselage So he added three ounces to his airplane. Whatever. <laughs> it is not light. I don't care how thin you put it on. myself I'm kidding myself I have to go and sand it holy moly sand it again I sanded it once I need to do it again how was my trip well it took five hours <laughs> Stopped at Dan's house. I've been on the road since 12 o'clock or since 9 o'clock this morning and just got back about an hour ago. So about 10 hours, but I stopped and I spent three, four hours with Dan. Kind of like an old homecoming. We talked about airplanes and making crap and <laughs> this hobby is wonderful. You got lifelong friends. Got a few knuckleheads, but <laughs> lifelong friends. If you look at the shine here in this area, it looks nothing like what the top does. The top would polish out real nice, real quick. Because it's already been hand rubbed. It only needs a, a little bit. See how much difference the shine is on the top? And I'll get the bottom to look like that. It doesn't it doesn't take a lot of paint. It just takes a lot of elbow grease, or in this case, the buffer. Let's see if we can get it to pull up a little bit more. Uh, this worries me doing this left hand, and I'm afraid I'm gonna shake this down and drop it through my wing.
I got to be careful again because uh, two different. Oh yeah, man, I was a truck driver. I, I think I can make it. Okay, let's let's hit this one time here. See if we can refrain from flipping the shit all over the apartment. Leading edges are easy because you can push up. Dan to uh, chime in here. I know you guys are waiting for a disaster to happen here, and it might. The bad thing about buckling this thing out right now is it's what they consider green, meaning that it's not completely hardened. But it does. It does uh, buff out pretty easy when it's soft. Let's see what they said. No, no, it's uh, Happy New Year, Chris. No, Montana, you're fine. A paint is a science. Remember, it's a, it's a chemistry experiment. And the first thing you don't want to do in chemistry experiments is mix and match. If you start with Aerogloss, finish with Aerogloss. If you start with Sig Dope, finish with Sig Dope. I use all uh, Wix or Randolph products, which is basically Brodac, except it is slightly different. It is a slightly different formula. You can tell by the smell. It has less pigment than, uh, than Randolph. You'll notice, if you, anybody ever watch uh, Windy Tapes, he's always talking about decanting. When you decant paint, you're taking the binder out. And if you take the binder out, all you have is powder. You have the uh, the pigments. Well, he, he's figuring that the vehicle or the, yeah, the vehicle, the binder is heavy. But it's not. It's the pigments because the binder gasses off. So I don't, I don't recommend decanting paint. And you ask, what is decanting paint? You turn the paint can on a shelf upside down for a week. <laughs> or not upside down, but right side up. Leave it sit still for a week. And then pour off the liquid off the top. You're taking the binder out of it. I recommend that. 
Well, that polished up nice. I just got to keep working on the bottom, I guess. I go out and get that sandpaper out of the car. Actually, the top here could use some more sanding, too. But we'll do that when I bone it out. But it's presentable, so when I go over to John's tomorrow, he can look at it. I won't. I doubt I. You know, I won't have the bottom buffed out, but get an idea what it looks like. I brought back some wood. I went into my wood stash and found another pile of five pound wood. This is quarter inch stuff and uh, eighth inch stuff. So we're getting a, a decent stack. I should have another stack uh, of wood come in from uh, from my connection <laughs> so we'll double the size of this stack here I need to pick it up now I have quite a bit of wood in that box in the corner too but it's it's also wood but this this will be used on my new airplane there's probably two airplanes here actually so we'll go through and we'll pick the first round and then the second round. Any questions? 22, 21 watchers. I think I'm going to run out to the car real quick and grab the sandpaper so I can sand this again. Because it does need, it. it's, you know, kind of gravelly, papery. You can... I don't know how to explain it. It's not, it doesn't reflect the light perfectly because it's not perfectly smooth. The cap strips are real smooth and the leading edge is real smooth. But in this area right here, some of it's pretty good. It just needs another sand out. And then I got to do the bottom. It's <laughs> just the way it is. Yeah, if you want to build light and you want a light, nice finish, it's all in sandpaper. All the rubbing in the world won't get you there until you get it all sanded flat. Give me a second. You know, it's only like 50 feet away. I'm going to get the paper out of the car. I'll try to download all these movies that I've done on the uh, on the finish on this. I don't know. I got about ten of them or so, and uh, I'll try to download them all and clip them 
and condense them down to an hour. That way, you know, I don't know. You might gain something out of it that way. Oh no, not another sanding. Yeah, another sanding. Okay. The hardest thing to do is up in the corners because you can't you can't manhandle sand this. You gotta gotta be gentle. I would say there's probably another 40 hours of sanding to do on this airplane. Maybe more. Depending on how fast the bottom goes. Because here I've done the top. And I spent two days on it. And it still ain't done. And when it's done, it'll look just like monocoat. Only we know that it's paint. Let's see if it's flattened. better. Still need some more. You gotta see some of Dan's propellers he made. Beautiful stuff. But just like anything, I mean, I can learn to do it. No big deal. I think uh, most of the work on these airplanes, you know, somebody was saying that. I can't do it. Yeah, well, you can't do it because you don't want to do it. <laughs> Absolutely boring, but I will stand here for hours. this airplane here is going to be just as nice as the Monado. I wonder if that Monado would come up even better with a machine polisher. That was all hand done.
Anyway, I wanted to show you them bell cranks. I wonder if I... Let me show you this bell crank. Yeah, if I can find it. Did I already put it in the airplane? I don't think so. Well, this is it. This is a phenolic bell crank. This is the one I was going to put in it. I have another carbon bell crank around here that Jeff Traxler made. That's a real odd shape. I don't know where it is. I'm so well organized. Not. Okay, this is a phenolic bell crank that Tom Morris sells. I bought uh, an airplane at a wing at a contest for five bucks or whatever and I broke the wing and I got the I got the uh, bell crank out of it these are okay but these this is phenolic this is carbon this is about an ounce this is about eight seven grams it's a big difference they're both the same thickness both exactly the same shape actually Same design. If any of you guys have seen, Dan used to have a website. Oh, here's that bell crank. Come on. You can weigh this too. Okay, here we have three different examples of the bell crank. Phenolic, the Dan Winship bell crank, and the Jeff Traxler bell crank. And this this uh, is a pretty good idea. What what these curves do is, you know how when you're pulling on your lines, the spar always gets in the way. It also has a setup like the Brett Buckbell crank that you could put a bushing in there so that the lines don't go down through this way. They go around the pivot pin. And this would probably, you could probably make this lighter by cutting the webbing out and it would remain its strength, you know. But I think I'll show that to Dan and uh, maybe we can do a bell crank similar design like this. But it's got to be seven grams. Let's see what this one weighs. Twice as heavy, 14 grams as opposed to 7 grams. I can't really weigh this because it's got extra crap on it, but yeah, that, that's way too heavy. This, this setup right here is over an ounce. A ball length, the bell crank, no good. So on my new airplane, I'll be using the finest buck bell crank you can get. The reason why there's not many of those bell cranks around, nobody wanted to pay for them. Pay for what they're worth.
I went over there and he's got all kind of resins and, and, uh, you know, he did a lot of research and, and making the mold and all that. If I could pay a hundred dollars for a, uh, for a gas tank, 50 bucks for a bell crank shouldn't be out of the question. I paid 50 bucks for Medusa spinner. I'm gonna make some gas tanks this this winter too. I took pictures of uh, the materials that I need and the phone numbers for where I need to get it from, and we'll be showing all this stuff on the on the Saturday at John's. If you guys are interested in making your own bell cranks and stuff you know a lot of people wouldn't give that information away because they're worried about making you cannot make money doing this <laughs> it's the total waste of time to think you're going to make money at this Let's see if we can catch it ref reflecting. Okay, you'll notice that I build this all out right here. Let's see if it'll come back. Should come back pretty shiny. Shiny er. Okay, Shop Gremlins got my buffer. And I haven't been anywhere. Come on. I know, I need it on a string. It disappeared. It bring over here. No, oh, there it is. Hiding underneath the uh, paper towel. Okay, see you next time. Try to keep your pads separated when you're buffing. One for compound, one for polish. What do I do if the shine doesn't come back? Never have I not made it come back. We'll see.
doesn't come back, keep rubbing. Well, we got that one out. Could use a little more up there, I suppose. Need a little bit more up here. why it takes me a whole summer to bump an airplane out. Just work on a little spot. Bump it till it's right and move to the next one. Smell it now, it's getting warm. That's a good thing. And I'll go on each bay. And uh, see, the thing is. This, this came up, and it came up pretty nice, shiny, shining pretty good. But I'll move over one more bay and do the next one. And the problem is, is that I'll have to do it a couple of times. It just takes a ton of work.
See, right up here, it looks like acne up there. Well, I got to sand that out and polish it up. And, and remember, I got to do this all on the bottom, too. <laughs> exactly the same thing. That, that's coming out pretty good. I kind of waited till I got back here when I had this stand instead of trying to do it on my buffing or my pad on the bench so that I could stand up and kind of look over it and see exactly what I'm doing. We got 20 people watching me buff an airplane. Are you learning anything? <laughs> That's the big deal. We get some pretty good refraction out of that. Let's uh, let me grab the camera. We'll move it around. And see if it's uh, it's reflected pretty good. That's the spot I just did right here. And I'll go down here until this reflects just like that, this shell. This shell is, uh, it, it's starting to come up. You can see, you can see some reflection in it. Same with the, uh, let's see, right there is a perfect shot. You notice right here, and you notice right here, there's a, uh, yeah, right on the cat strip. Wait a minute, this one right here. You can see little holes in it. All those little holes in that cap strip right there where the light is reflecting on it. You got to sand those out in order to have a, a finish like this on the whole thing. If you look right here, little holes, and I'll sit and I'll spend hours sanding all that out. Let's see this side. This side here, I, yeah, I worked on this a little bit more. This side here is reflecting pretty good. It's been sanded about five times. Needs another one yet. We just keep sanding with finer and finer paper. The nose reflects pretty well. But see, these hardwood surfaces are pretty easy because you can push on it. These open bays right here, like right here where you, where you see this area right here, I'll have to spend a couple of hours probably sanding that out. It needs it again. And then right in here needs a little bit. But that is how you get a super, super nice finish is uh, sanding. Sucks, but what are you going to do? You know, most people wouldn't sit down and sand that much, but I will. So it looks like that one up there. <laughs> This message is for Danny. That one there is the one that I did on the on the video. This one over here, it's shiny, but uh, it was kind of a half. That's a one week paint job. 
one week because I had to get it ready so I could allow Charles to fly that one hanging on the wall there. But this one here, we we got we got some time before the gnats. I'm going to uh, well, it's not really orange peel. The paint laid down on this really nice. This you just have to work it in order to get it out. I mean, I could take some 600, but then I'd have scratches that I'd have to sand out. So you have to go 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, 3,000, and then polish. And I will get them all out. They will all go away. Over the whole airplane. You know, this, uh, looking at this in the video, it really helps me because I can see things with this camera that I can't see with my eyes. So that's why I'm doing this, to kind of get an idea of where I need to, to work on. I really need to work on this area here. This area here will shine just like this. And then, like I said, where do you stop? You know, it, it's never going to be perfect. You'd like it to be. It just ain't going to happen. Look down on it. Yep, needs another sand out right there. Keep the sanding. Now, I did. I just did this. It will get done once or twice more because it ain't perfect. But we'll wait for it to dry up. Like in the corners, I got it. I got the ink line right there. I have to repair that. You got to be careful. You can really you can burn through an ink line if you take that buffer. You can burn through an edge. Bang, just like that, and then you're crying. So be careful with a machine polisher. If you're not comfortable doing it, do it by hand. Yeah, I need to get them pock marks out of there. I just hope there's enough clear on that right there to, to get them out. When I showed Dan this, you know, Danny's a good builder and good finisher. Excellent. But he told he told me just like everybody, you know, they just paint them until they're done. Well, you can't do that. <laughs> yeah. One quart of dope is all you get. I don't know whether we can see this or not. Let's see if I can do that. Yeah, you can kind of see it. Can you see through the wing at the shell? That's how thin the paint is on it. It's uh, very thin. Very, it's non-existent. <laughs> when it's sitting on the ground, or sitting outside, when you're out, you won't know. You won't notice the difference. 
when it's sitting in the 180 building, it looked perfect. But when it goes up in a wing over, you'll look at it and spot the sun <laughs> right through the wing. That's when you know you got the right amount of paint on it. You make it 100% opaque, it's going to be heavy. Which would have been another couple of coats of clear or a couple coats of white. One half pint, that's all you get. All right, guys, been on an hour. Appreciate you watching. I hope you learned something about the bell cranks. Uh, we're going to be making these on camera come the 16th. Dan's going to give you all the uh, all the materials that you need to, to make these. And we'll you know, tell you, you got to make a plug. You got to make one of these first. You make it out of phenolic and then sand it smooth. And then he's got some uh, special casting uh, resin with aluminum in it. And you need some drill rod and you poke three holes in it. I think we could make this lighter even. If you, had, oh, I was getting on Dan. Dan Winship had a YouTube channel, Winship Models. It was, uh, can't remember what the heck the, Geo Cities was the host of it. And he showed how strong these were and how much strength it took to break lead outs. And it's absolutely amazing how strong this is. It will withstand anything that we put it through. I couldn't pull on this hard enough to break it. The lead out to break first. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. See you on the next go around. See ya.